you know, the problems we're trying to solve, I guess, fall into two classes. You know, so what we do is we use genetic variation to understand human disease. And at the moment, the thing we're excited about is trying to use uh, rare variation, which might have very clear function, to, to help us get very close to mechanism. For example, this idea of studying natural knockouts. You know, in practice, you know, what we do is figure out how to, to, to do analysis for as the data is collected. And what we're seeing is, that, you know, we have this huge pile of data and uh, a big challenge is basically coming up with effective methods to make sense of it. You know, so I think at the moment, uh, as, as we're speaking, I have a couple of guys in the lab who are setting up, you know, 4,000 new hard drives because we have four petabytes of data coming over the next few months. And uh, if you use the tools that were state of the art as of a couple of years ago, it probably would take you several months to catch up with that, that pile of data. And so a, a big thing is computationally, how do we keep up with, with the data we can generate now? And I think another thing is basically we rely on collaborators who are experts in their individual diseases to make sense of the data, understand what are the interesting clues, what are the interesting questions to ask. And so there's a lot of work in trying to make the data accessible, not just to people who are very good computationally, but to, our, to everybody else. So they, they can look at the data, they can ask questions about a gene, and they don't have to bother with, I need to figure out how to run 4,000 drives, or I need to figure out how to run a cluster of several thousand computers. They can just work on a browser and the, the details of the computation are hidden from them, but they can explore the data and think about interesting things to, to find. I remember when I started in the early 2000s, uh, you know, every year uh, we uh, would write a, a little annual report for evaluation by the senior faculty in the department. And I said, you know, my goal is to, to, to help find genes for human diseases. You know, and I guess as a five-year goal, I'd like to find at least one of these, or maybe I should change fields. And, uh, you know, and I remember the, the, the feedback came back. You know, that was a pretty flippant comment to make because who, who knew if, you know, for complex disorder, if one would ever find something that was definite. You know, and obviously the field changed quite a lot, and now we have hundreds of these signals that we're very confident and rely on. And so I think it was very exciting to be part of that shift. And there were many little steps from, you know, building catalogs of genetic variants to figuring out how to genotype them at scale figuring out methods that allowed uh, different groups to combine their data. You know, those were all steps that we were involved in, I guess, where you could see a big transformation. You could go from a few small data sets with no clear answer to one combined data set with very, very clear answers. And now that's basically the standard. Now, now everybody says, each time I do an analysis, I'm going to combine it with all the other data for the same question that's out there. Uh, and so that's been exciting. And I think it's also been kind of sobering that it turns out that even after you find these signals, you find all these genetic variants that are associated with psoriasis or uh, whatever disease you're interested in, it's much harder than we thought to make sense of them, you know, and so then you, it turns out you have new questions to, to tackle. There, there's a few things that are really exciting that are happening now, you know, so I mentioned in passing this idea that we can now study these natural knockouts and use them to understand function. If we can collect a set of individuals that by chance of nature uh, have a broken copy of a particular gene and we can look at them in detail, we can try and understand what the consequences are of breaking each gene. You know, and the current standard is that if you have a very clear biological target, you know, one of the ways you, you, you could develop a drug is to develop these antibodies that will go and and block that gene in an individual and they are active, you know, for, for weeks to, to months at a time. And so it's, we have good ways to generate drugs if we're very clear on the target and, and the consequence of blocking that target. And I guess it's interesting to imagine that in the future we'll have even better ways. Perhaps, you know, we'll be able to adapt uh, CRISPR gene editing to humans and we'll say now instead of giving you an antibody that you have to come back every few weeks and get a, uh, a boost, you know, we'll 
design a CRISPR target that will go and remove these genes from the right cells in your body and you'll be like a vaccine. It's a one shot and you'll be cured for life. You know, and so, so it's kind of interesting to imagine that genetics will shift in that way. That, you know, over some period of time we'll understand what each gene does, we'll have very clear targets, we'll have ways to come up with permanent cures for diseases that now either don't have treatments or are kind of chronic, you need to keep coming back. Uh, you know, I guess that would be a nice big picture ambition. You know, you'll have to come back and check in 15, 20 years, see if, <laughs> if it panned out. I guess. I'm really motivated by doing something new and figuring something out that, you know, we either thought couldn't be done or didn't know how to do before. You know, so I think one of the reasons that uh, uh, I've enjoyed, uh, you know, developing tools and computational methods is because they, they both help you solve these big problems, but they also, if you do it right, they get you in this position where you can say, you know, I had this question, how do you combine data across multiple genetic studies? And you figure out how to do it, you do it once or twice, but then you can say, you know, I've figured out the solution, I've put out nice tools, it, it would be kind of boring to do it for the 50th time, but now I can put out these tools out there and people can apply it to all sorts of different problems and you can say, you know, they're making a difference, but you can move on to other problems rather than fi figuring out you're always going in a loop and doing the same thing you figured out to do five or six years ago. And so it's kind of exciting to, to think about what's the next big problem, what's the next thing that I don't know how to do either because there's too much data or because the data is complicated in interesting ways and you have to try and figure out how to make sense of it. If I could reset the clock last three or four years, that's, you know, there's always things you do different. And I guess one thing that um, I learned, you know, as I've gone along, it, you, when you start in these fields, you often think, you know, there's one right or optimal solution and you kind of set out to figure out what it is and uh, you know you also kind of think you know you have a good sense for what good experiments are and what bad experiments are and it's true that you know if if you're going to be successful over some period of time you have to to be somewhat accurate but it, it's also kind of fun to look back and say you know some experiments I thought were terrible and this would never work and then it turns out they work amazingly well and uh, in computational methods, you know, there's methods for, for example, making sense of sequence data that I thought, you know, these things are completely up the wrong direction. And then it turns out they're incredibly effective. And the other thing that's been remarkable is that as, as data and questions get more complex, it turns out that, you know, there probably is no single right approach that one can find. And one can get a lot out of combining a few different approaches and, and trying to make sense of the thing together. Um, I guess that's what I would say. So.